You're going to enjoy In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, because Jimmy Burrow is our special guest, and he always adds a lot of perspective. This is a guy that was a high-caliber player in the secondary in his football career, coached for many, many years at a high level. And he's got a son named Joe Burrow, who's a pretty darn good football player. And a couple of other sons that played football as well at Nebraska, linebackers. It's a football family. The first family of football is the Burrow family. And we talked to Jimmy about the highs and lows of the football game that was just uh, played out in Kansas City. Joe's perspective on that, the offseason coming up, what makes Joe Burrow tick. The Joe Burrow Foundation is off and running, and it's uh, it's very successful. And Jimmy tells you how to be a part of that. A lot of good things with Jimmy Burrow. You're going to enjoy it. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, in our First Star Logistics studios. And time for another visit with a tremendous guest. He's been very kind and gracious to us, and he has given us time again today. And that is none other than Jimmy Burrow, coach, player. And you might know his son. His son's Joe. Joe Burrow, where's number nine for the Cincinnati Bengals? He's pretty good. <laughs> Jimmy, how you doing this morning, sir? I'm good, doing good, Dave. How are you guys? We're hanging in there, still trying to recover. Obviously, uh, mm-hmm. that was a uh, that was a tough loss. And as you know, you've been in these experiences as a as a player and as a coach. Uh, when you're in a playoff scenario, uh, when it doesn't end the way you hope, it's like falling off a cliff. I mean, all of a sudden, it is over, and it's over like right now. There's no more preparation uh for the for the next opponent and uh man it's it you go from as busy as you possibly can be mentally physically every way to like ooh, what do i do now yeah well that's that's true whether you're a player coach uh fan parent uh yep. you know we're all going to be lost uh, uh for for a few weekends and uh i i thought once upon a time that uh you know when when I, I was in the business so long that you kind of you don't get used to to the the end of the season and and losing a big game. Uh, but I thought maybe it would sting a little less. But you know when it's when it's your son involved and and uh, you know how much is is invested in in that that football team, it it hurts uh, even more. But uh, a lot of great things to look forward to. There's no question. I mean. Uh... Joe recently said, and, and, and very accurately, people, somebody was asking about a window, you know, boy, if you don't get this player signed, that player signed, what about the window, the window of opportunity? And Joe looked at him and said, well, you know, the window is as long as I'm here. That's the window. <laughs> and he's, he's absolutely right. I mean, the, 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 the Cincinnati Bengals are a top contender on a year-to-year basis now. It's There, there are no two ways about it. And then and, and in this league with salary cap and all that sort of thing, even though there's $16 million more to the salary cap this year than there was the year before, there's always, you know, things you have to juggle and the team's never the same. Um, so there'll be some new components to the football team yeah. next year. And then when you have success, like the Bengals have had the coordinators start to get opportunities. And Brian Callahan is interviewed for a second time now with the Indianapolis Colts. And he's going to be, interviewing out in Arizona, Lou Anarumo as well. They'll both be interviewing for the same job out there. So that's, uh, you know, that, that is what, that's what happens when uh, an organization is successful. Others say, I want a piece of that. So there's, there's good and there's challenges to it obviously as well. Well, the, I think the number one thing is when, whether you're, uh, it's coaches or, or players trying to trying to keep those guys uh, under contract and and free agents uh, uh, even in the future is uh, creating a culture where people want to stay uh, with the Bengals and 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 people want to come uh, play with the Bengals and right. so that's a that's a big start. I mean, if if you don't have that, then you know you can forget about uh, attracting new free agents, new coaches if needed, and also 
keeping the the coaches that you have and and keeping the the players that uh, are coming to the end of their contract. So that's a big positive uh, when when it comes to to uh, Cincinnati Bengals and and I think uh, they they do most of the, all the players really do want to play for the Bengals. But we understand it's a business and and uh, uh, but I'm confident that uh, you know Zach and the and the front office uh, the owners they're they're gonna they're gonna uh, do a good job and and make sure that the you know the core of the team is still there. Yeah, you make a great point. Um, Cincinnati has become a destination, you know, amongst the league, uh, other teams in the league. It's like, well, if it doesn't work out here, where where would I might want to go? Well, I'd like to go to Cincinnati with a guy named Joe Burrow. I, I think Joe is a big reason why Cincinnati is has become a destination. The success the team has had, the success Joe has had, the culture that has come as a, as a result of it, everything you talk about. And uh, in the, in the, the coaches were doing exit interviews with players on Monday and the media was allowed to one last go round of interviews in the locker room. And like you said, Jimmy, all the players are like, well, I want to stay. Yeah. You know, I, I hope it works out, but I'd like to stay here. We have, we have a top five quarterback in everybody's book. And uh, in probably more more than a top five, a top three quarterback in in everybody's book, and and we're, you know, we have a winning culture, and and uh, money's important, but so is environment and culture and everything else. And everybody's like, I want to stay, I want to be part of this, and and that's what you look for. <laughs> well, you know, Zach Zach Taylor, uh, Lou Anarumo, uh, Pitch uh, Callahan, uh, all, all those guys. Uh, have done a great job, uh, not not just uh, with on the field uh, coaching, but I, I think developing that culture in the locker room. And right. uh, when you are talking to to free agents, and if you do need to talk to other coaches for uh, to hire, then you know they're they're going to reach out to the coaches already here. They're going to reach out to the players already here. And and yeah, Joe's there, and and a lot of other great players. But uh, they're going to also ask about. Hey, uh, uh, how is uh, Zach Taylor to, to play for? How is is uh, Lou to play for? And uh, I can't imagine that the players on on the Bengals uh, wouldn't give you know both of those and and uh, all the other coaches just raving reviews. And and that's a big part of attracting uh, even more coaches and uh, free agents. That's absolutely right on the money. There's there no no question about it. Um, as you looked on the at the Bengals during their 10 game winning streak, Jimmy, mm-hmm. as a, as a great coach that coached a long time, what, what things struck you um, from a performance standpoint that they were doing on a weekly basis that helped them into that 10 game winning streak? I think they were doing a, a great job of, of playing to, to their, to their strengths, uh, uh, you know, which is, really throwing the football, but, but also being able to, to run the football to a certain extent and play action, uh, protection schemes, uh, uh, you know, were, were, were good. And, uh, uh, so they did a great job of game planning on both sides of the ball, uh, limited turnovers. Uh, they, they weren't maybe as explosive as, as last year, but I think that's a credit to once again, Zach, Joe, the offense for, understanding the way people were playing them and they were able to, to, to throw the check downs and, and throw a screen here and there and, and take basically what, what the defense was, was giving us. And, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, it all starts uh, uh, with stopping the run. Yep. And even though the NFL is, is, is really uh, uh, about passing, at least that's what the fans think. But in, in reality, it's, it's about stopping the run on defense and, and uh, our defense did a great job of that. Even even uh, uh, Sunday did a great job of that. And and so you put those two things together, and you end up uh, with a with a ten game winning streak. You know, defensively, uh, Jimmy, the the Bengals didn't have like an exorbitant number of takeaways. It wasn't like a staggering number. They they were solid in that regard. But it was when they occurred. You know, yeah. I mean, it was it was so timely. It was like a key red zone takeaway in the fourth quarter that, uh, you know, the New England Patriots are basically trying to win the game. Boom, that takeaway happens. 
you know, stripping uh, Kelsey after he makes the catch in the regular season game. Pratt stays with it, strips it out of there, and just the timing of a yeah. lot of these takeaways. A lot of uh, there were it was five games in a row they had a fourth quarter takeaway that was a big big factor in 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 winning the football game, and that's important, isn't it? Uh, where players have that kind of confidence mm-hmm. and that kind of belief, just keep working at it, working at it, you're going to get one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I know emphasis uh, uh, is is placed on that in practice and, and in meetings, and and uh, we have done a good job in in the the most critical moments of creating turnovers and and the other aspect of of defense is preventing uh, explosive plays. And there's tons of them in the NFL, and that's the easiest way to to lose games is to to give up. Uh, big and explosive plays, whether it's run or pass. And, you know, thinking back of the whole season, we just didn't, we didn't give up that many. So that's, that's a credit again to, to our, our defensive coaches and, and our players to, uh, to play to their strengths. And, you know, we don't, we don't blitz a lot. Uh, but when we do, it's, it's an opportune time. It does put, put pressure, pressure on the, on the quarterback and, and uh, we're able to get there with our blitzes. You know, once again, it's you can be too blitz happy in, in the NFL and get get burned, but our defense does a great job of uh, of, of doing a little of both, blitzing, playing coverage, and and uh, uh, preventing those big and explosive plays. You know, we talked about the the culture a little bit that that uh, Zach and his and the staff and the players have have developed here, and and it is a very very close football team. I mean, these guys not just like each other, they love each other. I mean, they respect each other's ability to make plays and uh, from the pure football aspect of it. But man, they also um, just, you know, love each other as people, you know, they want to spend time around each other. It's amazing. When, when practice is over, guys are still hanging around down there playing ping pong, doing whatever else and spending time together and, and the extra time they put in um, voluntarily with each other, for meetings and additional yeah. film study and, you know, maybe suggesting some adjustments uh, during the course of the week that the coaches are all ears about. It's just an, a very, very good dynamic they have going on in that football team, isn't it? Yeah. Joe talks, talks about it a, a, a lot. Uh, uh, you know, credit to, to the players they've brought in. They've done a great job of, of looking at character and, and that's important. Yeah. You have to, have athletic ability and be able to play, but uh, characters is is a big part of a of a great team. Uh, you know, everybody has has the the will to to win, but they've looked deeper into a person and saw the the guys that are willing to prepare to win, and uh, uh, that's that's a big big part of it. These guys do a great job of preparing, and I think part of that preparation is uh, the bonds that that are developed, uh, you know, whether it's ping pong or chess or, or just hanging out, watching film, uh, when, when it's, it's not an official meeting and, and, uh, uh, that whole football team uh, does a great job with that. So you as a former coach, what's your take on, uh, the borough head and, you know, the trash talking that the chief said that, you know, they use that to their advantage. And I, I can remember, uh, reading and seeing gay, the linebacker when he was asked, what, what do you, uh, what do you think about the, the the Bengals offense? Nothing. You know, I mean, they, they, yeah. they had their, they had their share of things too. It's like to the victor goes the spoils. The victor can now yeah. you know do whatever they want to do with it. But I mean, to me, what's wrong with showing a little confidence? Yeah, it's it's a, an emotional game. Uh, a lot of times things are said in the in the heat of the moment, and uh, uh, you know, it gets blown out of proportion really by the media and then the players sure. do pick up on it. You have, you like to have a little bulletin board material that, that never, uh, never hurts. But right. you know, once you step out on the field, I don't, I don't think anybody really was, was thinking about that. It was how to execute the play, uh, the next play on offense and defense. So there's always uh, g- going to be some of that in, in, uh, in football. It's a physical game and it's an emotional game. So, uh, I think it's all just part of it. Uh, you know, it's there's a there's a thin line between confidence and uh, cockiness and bravado, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, mo- most guys, for the most part, are able to walk that thin line. What did you think about Steve Spagnuolo's uh, defensive 
uh, structure, game plan, and play calling? How, how do you think? Um, what what problems yeah. did you see that? What problems did you see that he presented? I think they did a a, a good job of, of of mixing it up in the secondary. Yeah. Whether it's man zone, uh, really, still everything they they did was to try to prevent the explosive play, which is you know how yeah. everybody. Uh, tries to defend uh, Joe and our and our offense, and then uh, uh, you know they did a good job on uh, up front of of uh, you know creating uh, matchups and and uh, getting pressure when when they needed pressure, and uh, they have a, they have a lot of good players over there on defense, and uh, uh, Spagnola does a does a great job. He's a he's a veteran coach, you know he's he's played now. Uh, Joe and the and the Bengals, I think four times. So yeah. you got to give them credit. I mean, we still had our our opportunities, but uh, uh, you know they did a good job. Patrick Mahomes obviously, uh, you know, showed his mental and physical toughness. And after the game, I heard you know that when he and Joe got together and congratulated each other, Patrick goes, "Yeah, we're, this is." this is going to happen for a while or something to that extent. This isn't, this isn't the last one of these we're going to be uh, squaring off. And, 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 and those two, I mean, tell, that's quarterback at a high level boy, Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow uh, squaring off anywhere, anytime. It's, it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah, I think, I think they're right. It, it is going to uh, be a, a lasting uh, rivalry because they're still young quarterbacks and, uh, you know, the, the, the good thing about both of them, uh, you know, Patrick can come into to Bengal Stadium, Paycor Stadium, and and uh, the, the crowd noise probably uh, d- doesn't really bother him that much. Just like uh, Joe on, on Sunday, you know, the crowd noise is as, as, uh, as high as it, uh, loud as it can possibly be in any NFL stadium, and they were, right. he was still able to perform. So that's, that's a credit to, to both of those guys in the communication of the, of the team. But uh, yeah, two of the, the best quarterbacks in the league and they're young and uh, they got a, a great surrounding uh, the, uh, personnel and coaches and ownership. So yeah, I, I, I'm sure there are going to be more of those games uh, for the next several years. So what's, what's Joe's um, off season like it, it right, right now, I'm sure it's just, you know, kick back and just, yeah kind of recover and relax a little bit does does he take you know a period of time to do that and just like man just kind of de- decompress from the game of football a little bit he does i mean he he doesn't throw for uh you know a month or so maybe two months i'm not sure he he uh uh decides on that uh, depending on on his on his health uh, he he will take some time off I'm not sure how much but he likes to get pretty much right back in the in the weight room and uh, uh, that that'll happen uh, fairly soon here. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be marketing opportunities uh, that we don't really ask him to do. Hardly any. His WME, his marketing agency, knows that Joe is all football during the course of the year, and so they limit right. that. Right. So he'll do some of, some of those. And uh, uh, you can see behind me the Joe Burrow Foundation, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can we can get Joe involved in a in a few events, whether it's Cincinnati or Baton Rouge or Athens. Uh, you know, you can see back there. Joe says there, everybody has a responsibility to to do good, and and uh, uh, you know he he truly believes that. And we're going to do some good here in the off season. Not any specific events yet, but those are the type of things that that we'll be working on. But he likes to hang out with his friends, so. Uh, uh, you know, Bengal friends, uh, Ohio State friends, LSU friends, and and other uh, friends that he's developed uh, across the years of playing. So he likes spending time with those guys too. Yeah, the the, uh, the Joe Burrow Foundation. How, how's it going, Jimmy? Is everything? Yeah. Uh, are you pleased with with the response that you've received and and uh, and things that you're doing? Yeah, we uh, uh, you know we we're getting donations uh, every day. We're we're building up. Uh, uh, a, a good financial uh, foundation that that we we can reach out even even more. Uh, we're going to come up here pretty soon with with a grant application where uh, we get so many requests. It's kind of got to turn into a little a little more of an official application instead of a phone call to me or Robin or Amy Floyd, our executive director. 
Right. So there'll be a process to, to fill out some forms and and uh, start looking at, at grants uh, uh, that we can, uh, you know, grant application that we can we can help people again, whether it's southeast Ohio, Athens, uh, Cincinnati, metropolitan area and Ohio in general, and then Baton Rouge, New Orleans and Louisiana. So uh, it's got, it's, we've had a great start and it's just going to keep getting better and better. That's great. That's great news. Joe has only played three years in the NFL. I mean, it's it, it's almost like <laughs> you, you think, ah, oh, he's got to be at least five years in the league. You know, it's like he he's he's such a uh, uh, such a star. I mean, you know, he 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 takes over takes over not only his football team but the league a little bit in terms of man, this guy is the way he plays the game is extraordinary. Do you think does he feel like he's a from from year rookie year to finishing year three here? Does he feel like he's been on a major league growth pattern? Certainly, uh, uh, he thinks so, and and I think it's it's evident in in uh, watching him him play. Uh, he, he's developed uh, mentally and physically, and and that'll continue. And you know the 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 one thing he's still never had a normal off season. He had COVID before his rookie year. Yeah, he had his uh, uh, injury before his second year. And, and then last year he had the emergency appendectomy before right. camp. So in his mind, uh, you, you know, there's, there's tons of improvement uh, left out there in the off season. And that's why I know, you know, he's going to, he's going to hit it hard. Uh, as, as we talked about, he takes some, some rest from throwing the football, but he's right back in the weight room. He'll spend some time probably in California with uh, Jordan Palmer his his quarterback coach uh, mm -hmm. in the off season. And uh, uh, really, if, if things go as, as planned, which they haven't yet in the offseason, he should be even, even uh, uh, better next year. Boy, I'll tell you, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's some unbelievable, unbelievable news, news there for sure. But you, you do, you forget that too. You forget that he yeah. has not had a, a, a complete normal offseason, um, but the, the way he has improved, people are like, well, is the football team better, the Bengals, this year's team better than last year's team? Well, in my opinion, yes, because the, the young players, the Joe Burrows, the Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, they've all played another year. You know, it's like yeah. you get those years, that year experience, that's a, that's a lot of reps. I mean, that's a lot of time spent together. It's a lot of time spent figuring out what to do against coverages, opponents, all those kind of things, and, and just improving your overall game. And that's the thing. This football team is so young. At so many places and, and so talented, they got a they got a big upside yet, don't they? The the future is certainly uh, uh, looks great. Uh, yeah, they're 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 a young football team, uh, but they're also now experienced in in big games and in playoffs. So that's a that's a, a big part of of a gro growth of a team and the evolution of a of a franchise. And yeah, they're they're. They're young, but they're battle tested. They can. They've proved they can compete with anybody anywhere. They prove they can. They can win, and uh, uh, you know they'll they'll continue to to uh, to develop. And I think again that as a team we'll we'll be better uh, next year than we were this year. And and talk about that, Jimmy, as a as a coach, the the development aspect when you're when you go deep into the playoffs and Super Bowl yeah. last year and almost the Super Bowl this year. Those extra practices, the the extra time spent developing and and preparing against good opponents, good opposition, and going through another game of that with that good opposition, doesn't that help develop your young players yeah. even yeah. more exponentially and quicker? Yeah, it carries over to and to the to the next year. Uh, if you end up with basically the same same people on offense or defense, you can just maybe get a little more complicated uh, with the, with your, uh, your, your plays on, on both sides of the ball. Not, right. not so much maybe com complex, but you can, you can add a little more here and there because the foundation is there. Uh, their communication is there and the coaches know uh, what their strengths are as far as learning and, and uh, playing and, and uh, they can continue to expand the, the, the playbook uh, on both sides of the ball. 
So what was it like? Uh, you were probably sitting in the stands with Jamar's dad, and and it's fourth and six, and, and Joe goes down the field to, <laughs> to Jamar for 35 yards to the six-yard line, five-yard line, whatever it was, and a couple of plays later, P. Ryan scores to tie the game at 20. What was your guys' reaction yeah. as dads? <laughs> well, I, I wasn't I wasn't sitting with with Jimmy. We spend uh, uh, we spend a lot of time the night before and, okay. and uh, uh, d- during the weekend. But uh, you know, fourth and six, you're thinking to try to get the first down. But right. uh, once again, the, the communication um, and, and knowing uh, Joe knowing the the coverage and the fact that you know Jamar had a chance to split the two safeties. Uh, um, you know that's a safe a throw as as a as an eight yard uh, out route. As far as those two guys are concerned, they've done it so much. So I've right. uh, kind of held my breath a little. I was in the end zone, uh, 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 little, little kind of up up in one of the boxes, and it was coming right at me. So uh, I did uh, uh, kind of lose my 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 breath there for a minute, but I could see he had a great chance to to catch the ball. So again, that's just the, the confidence that that uh, Joe has in Jamar and, and uh, Zach has in, in those guys as an offense. So in the early stages of the game, I mean, the first nine plays of the game, Joe gets sacked three times and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, and then uh, adjustments are, are made and uh, the fourth sack occurs fairly quickly, but then, you know, go, go good stretch of the game where, um, you know, the, the protection starts to get a little bit better. But boy, the start of that football game—the first quarter ends. The Bengals have no yards based on you know the the sacks mm-hmm. and the negative yardage of that. And I'm thinking, man, that that th- this is this is highly unusual. Uh, were, were you thinking the same thing? Like, what's going on here? Well, it's a you know it becomes kind of a chess match with with the coaches and and really the the quarterbacks uh, what they're seeing. So uh, we've done a great job all year uh, as as a coaching staff. They've done a great job. Uh, all year as a coaching staff to to make adjustments and whether it's uh, pass protection or or the running game or or uh, you know route concepts uh, they they do a great job and once again the the players are, are able to listen and and apply that uh, on the field and that's why for the most part if we do start out not great then you see steady improvement the, the rest of the game and that's that's the way it uh, played out on Sunday. Yeah, I mean to get to get down by a couple of scores in that environment is, is tough, and they come back like they always do. I mean, this football team does have high character in terms of never quit. You know, play every play to to the utmost, finish every play, uh, and then you know take take your chances based on that. It's it's you're you're in for the full sixty minutes here. It's not going to be you know fifteen or thirty. We're we're coming at you all sixty. I'm sure there was never a, a, a time, though, good times and bad times during that game uh, uh, that that our guys didn't think they were going to win. And, I agree. Uh, that's that's part uh, again of a of a great team and a close knit team and and the culture that's developed with a team is uh, just believing and expecting you're going to win and. And I can I, I know Joe felt that way and 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 I'm confident that the whole team, uh, whether they were down early, like you said, or uh, the Chiefs had the ball there at the end, I, I think to a man they they still believe they were going to win that football game. You know I I appreciate it as a former player, and I'm sure you appreciate it as a coach. Um, when, when Joseph Asai got called for the penalty. Uh, Jermaine Pratt, you know, um, was emotional initially yeah. and they, there's a video, you know, catching him barking at him and, but he got up and uh, first he apologized to Joseph and then he got up in front of the whole media and apologized, you know, to Joseph, um, and, and to see JB, uh, um, to see Hill, uh, you know, BJ. yeah, yeah, BJ Hill just right next to Joseph Asai every second, you know, protecting him basically, when he had to face the media and BJ Hill saying, look, I know I, I missed a sack last year that was pivotal. And if I made that play, you know, I, I know what he's going through. That just tells me that this team is special. You know, I mean, I, I think, I think um, the way Joseph handled it, you know, he's an intelligent guy, great player. He's having a really good football game. And then everybody else kind of, you know, embracing him and, and, and protecting him and, and making sure he was okay. It, it just tells me this football team is, 
is unique and special. Yeah, there's a, there's definitely a, a, a great bond there between between guys, and sometimes you, you don't see it uh, between offense and defense. But I think you know our our team is 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 like. Uh, the bond is is not just on each side of the ball, but between the the offense and the defense. And uh, it's coach speak here, but I mean, how many plays can you look back on in that football game and say if uh, that particular play had been executed by by you know player A, B, or C or who, whomever, then uh, we, we'd had an even better chance to win that game. So um, yeah, it, mistakes happen. And it's an emotional game. Uh, Osiah was hustling his tail off to, yep. to try to, to get there to keep him in bounds, which is uh, what what you want. And and uh, so, uh, yeah, he he uh, he's a great player. Uh, he he did a lot of uh, great things in that football game, and I I know that his future is is really bright uh, with the Bengals uh, also. No, I, I look at. Uh... <laughs> everybody's human, including officials, you know, and of course there's all kinds of things being talked about um, calls that were maybe missed or misinterpreted or whatever. But the one that got me, if they're going to call that, uh, you know, the penalty with Osai and, and Mahomes, and, and when you saw this, I'd, I'd like to hear your take on it. When, when Joe got smacked uh, balls out and he gets hit late, does a backward somersault gets on his feet and there's no flag. He looks at the official with, and raises his arms like, what? I mean, you're not going to call that? And, and and that's all he did. He didn't do anything other than that. It's like, oh, okay, it's going to be that kind of game. But then to have the inconsistency of, of making calls and then not making calls, that's the only thing that bothers me. I mean, officials are human. They're, there's there's going to be error. But the inconsistency is the thing that must drive coaches like you nuts, man. Yeah, you, you'd like uh, consistency, whether it's – uh, the first quarter or the, the last minute of, of a game. And, and uh, uh, you know, there were some frustrating calls. There's, yeah. there's uh, no, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, when, when you, when you're in a position that, that officials can, can uh, make, make calls one, one way or the other, either for you or against you to, to uh, affect the outcome of the game, then, then, uh, uh, you know, somewhat you've put yourself in that position, but you'd also, again, like it to be uh, consistent uh, on both sides of the ball. I agree 100,000%, Jimmy. And I just want to thank you again for carving time with us. I know you're, you're, the demands for Jimmy Burrow's time are extensive, <laughs> uh, and we, we appreciate uh, you, you giving us some of your time. Um, and, and best of luck with the Joe Burrow Foundation. You're doing great things for – for people and it, uh, you, you got a heck of a family. They get a lot to be, a lot to be proud of, sir. And uh, you guys are, that's a special, the Burrow family is a special family for sure. Well, I appreciate the kind words. We, we, uh, we, we love Ohio and we, we love the Bengals uh, and learn more about the foundation. And as I've said on, I think your podcast and others, if, if you make a donation, then, uh, we feel like you're a part of uh, the Joe Burrow team. So uh, uh, do what you can to help, and uh, uh, we'll keep people posted on events that might be happening uh, here in the offseason. And the Joe Burrow team is a good team to be part of. There's no question about that. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Jimmy, thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again soon. But until then, take care and God bless. We're already, already looking forward to the Vegas uh, Super Bowl next year, so uh, count on it. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know that. Gotta get that body right. That's so. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com. Hey there, everybody. I'm Dave Lapham, and uh, we do a, a podcast called In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And if you want to uh, hit the like button on when you're reserving any video, that would be a good thing to do. And if you want to subscribe and not miss any videos, make sure you do that because we are going to try to cover the Cincinnati Bengals every way 
that they can be covered.